Welcome back guys, it's Edward here from Not So Serious Gaming. Today I'll be showing you the full easter egg guide to Sea Town, created by Logical. First things first, you must activate power. Follow the white neon signs up to where Jug is and turn left and power's just here. Step 1. You can now enter the elevator in the Sea Town Hotel Lobby. Once you're at the top, you can activate the drop pod sequences using the machine on the left hand side. This will spawn in three drop pods around the map. Step 2. Whilst you're up here, you can also collect the backpack just next to this machine. This is needed for a later step. Step 3. One beacon is in the spawn area. Activate this and you must protect it for about a minute or so, preventing all the zombies from destroying it. This is actually a little bit trickier than you think. One beacon's over by the fountain and speed cola. Interact with this and Simon Says sequence will begin. Copy what Simon says by shooting the screens that previously illuminated. For the last beacon you need to pack a punch gun that you can do in the top floor of the hotel. The last one is over in the sewer system. You don't need to activate this, you just need to get kills with your pack a punch weapon. Step 4. An orb will spawn in in the courtyard with double tapping. Shoot this with any weapon and it will drop down to the floor. Using the backpack that you collected earlier, pick this up and head to the top of the hotel where Pap is. Now all you have to do is place it in the drop pod sequence machine on the left hand side. However, once you collect the canister, you'll be electrified slowing you down. So be careful, make sure you get a crawler when you do this or something as it makes it a hell of a lot easier. Step 5. When returning to Sea Town, the place will be enduring the worst storm ever and you must avoid the lightning so you can activate the elimination machine in the spawn area. This will trigger a cutscene, unlocking the trigger to the final boss, which can be activated over by the fountain by speed cola. Boss fight. Stage 1. Cannot cause damage to the boss why he has a ghost-like blue tint to him, as he's now invulnerable to damage. So to be able to damage him, you must shoot down the orb that he's holding. This will drop in a random area in the arena. Collect it and place it at the pedestal underneath his feet. After a short period of time, it will respawn back in his hands. Repeat this process one more time and his shield will be depleted and you'll be able to cause damage to him. Stage 2. This stage can vary depending if you're playing solo or co-op. If solo, you must locate and shoot a white symbol that will appear on the wall above one of the many statues. This will take you to a parkour gauntlet. Once you've completed each section, the red symbol at the end will turn green. You must shoot this to progress to the next parkour gauntlet. The final stage has a reddish orb at the end that you must collect and then be teleported back to the boss arena. Place this at the pedestal at the boss's feet and progress to the next stage. Stage 3. The next stage is similar to the first, although after shooting the orb out of the boss's hands, you must kill a magua that has just spawned in where it lands. Then you'll be able to grab the orb again and place it at the pedestal underneath the boss again. Repeat this step two more times until his shield has been depleted and then rain fire upon him once again. The final stage. A blue bubble will spawn in and you must stand within this to prevent yourself from taking any damage from what I can only assume to be a terrible smelling farm. Also, whilst you're inside this, you can damage the boss once again as he won't take damage unless you're within this. This blue bubble may move around, so just keep on your toes and make sure you get inside it as quick as you can so you can keep causing damage to the boss. Woohoo! You've taken down the boss and a custom weapon will now spawn in and you can loot all these boxes to get gold, guns, whatever you want. When you're done, you can teleport back by the trigger just underneath the boss. Once you're back, you'll be able to purchase the Bible ending within the top floor of the hotel where Pap is, using the machine just on the left hand side. Before you go though, I'm going to quickly run through the co-op phase for the stage 2 of the boss fight, and also all the side easter eggs that I managed to find for this map. Co-op phase, stage 2. Shooting the symbol will result in you staying in the arena, and your teammates will be transported to the parkour gauntlet and vice versa. Now when the player doing the parkour gauntlet reaches the end of each section, the player in the arena needs to shoot the red symbol that now has turned green. Only shoot it once it has turned green, so great communication is key, as you only have a few seconds to shoot this or all the players will return to the arena and you'll need to start this step again. To start this again, you just need to shoot the white symbol and the other players will be transported to gauntlet and vice versa. Side easter eggs. So there's a few side easter eggs that you can do to get some free perks, although with all the handouts you might not need this, but hey, I'm going to show you anyway. Also, you can find various masks around the map to give you even more of a fighting chance to succeed. So I'll show you them first as they're pretty damn cool. The Agile Kitsun Mask. This can be found in the courtyard with double tap just here by the benches. Demon Oni Mask. This can be found just above the courtyard with double tap in, just on your way to power on the right side here. Healing Kabuki Mask. This can be found by the Simon Says Beacon just here on the right hand side. Data card locations. A data card can be found in the courtyard with double tap in, just down on these benches here. To the left of the Simon Says machine, just around the back of these benches. 
Just up from the sewer on the way to power, it can be found on the wall here by Vigor Rush. Now you have all three, head over to where the massive fountain sort of thing is and head through this archway. You can place the data cards in the machine on the right hand side here for your free perk. Shield locations. The base. One can be found to the left of the Simon Says machine on this bench. Just over by the fountain and speed cola, you can see the shield part here on the left hand side against the building. Again by the fountain, just over by the Sea Town Hotel, you can see it leaning up against the wall here on the right hand side. The visor. Just inside the building to the left of Double Tap. Just as you leave the spawn area, head up and it's just past the wall by on the right hand side. As you enter the Double Tap courtyard from the spawn area, it's just in front of you here just by the wall by. Build this over in the sewers just over by Muscles Milk. Phone perk. There's three phones that when activated play the creepiest sound I've ever heard in all of Zombies history. Answering all these creepy calls will reward you with a free perk. One's in the courtyard with Double Tap. One's to the right hand side of Muscle Milk in the sewer section. Just behind Speed Cola, just head up the ramp on the right and it's just in front of you. There's also one in the spawn area. There may also be a few others, but only three will activate during one game. I would show all of them, but hey, there's so many free perks to get in this, I'm sure you don't need all the locations now. And I did start looking for logical letters around the map, although I found one and it was taking quite a while to find the rest, and I wasn't even sure how to shoot them to activate them, because shooting them with a non-pack-a-punch gun didn't count. Maybe you need a pack a punch one, I do not know. But hey, like I said many many times, you get so many free perks in this just by opening up all the crates, so I'd advise doing them, you don't need to find Logical's name, but if you want to you can, because I mean I did try, I just, I just didn't have the time. But hey, this has been Elwood from Not So Serious Gaming, I hope you enjoyed this guide as much as I enjoyed making it. This is one hell of a map and it's even cooler if you play it with the Super Mario Bros modded player pack. I actually played this on a stream last night with DK and Hollow and we had a great time. Make sure you check it out. Are you? Oh my bad, it's Mario. Awesome. <laughs> oh my fucking god. This actually looks so awesome. But hey, this has been Elwood from Not So Serious Gaming. Hope you have a great morning, evening, night, whatever time of day is. Hope you have a great one and peace out. The fuck was that?